Hi everybody, welcome to another week of Art Attack Zoom. This week C went over to DeSoto and borrowed their Cricut flat iron from Michelle. Appreciate it very much. So I'm going to set this to 340 degrees. We're going to do an eight minute press. I have my sandwich started over here with my towels and my Teflon sheet. I'm going to get my fleece that's soaking in water and we're going to get started. So stay tuned. I have my fleece in place and my silk noil that I had spritzed a little bit with vinegar water. I have dipped my leaves in the iron, a uh, homemade iron water that I made and I used my little foam trays with the fleece. So kind of like a stamp pad. And I'm going to, I'm faking you out here, I'm going to use my carrier blankets. Um, in about two seconds, I'm going to realize my mistake. Whoops, there it comes. So let me go get my carrier blankets and add those. I'm going to use two different colors. I really, really like how this orange comes out. And uh, I just think it looks like fall. I know that those ginkgos are not going to print for me, so I'm going to rely on my carrier blanket to give me that really pretty resist. And then this is that interfacing that I just dyed onto. It's not fusible, it's just a regular interfacing, and it really absorbs a lot of color. So I'm going to put two more pieces of my fleece that I've soaked in water. Still haven't even washed this stuff. You can see how grungy it kind of is. I don't really care. Uh, so I'm going to put that down, one more sheet, then I'm going to put my Teflon sheet, and we will start to press with the iron. Okay, coming in with that piece of Teflon, I'm going to put it on the top. I am going to set my timer for six minutes. And just remember, this is a flat iron. It, it's not heavy. It's not like the heat press, so we really have to apply a lot of pressure you want to be moving around a little bit, not too much where you'll get a shift. So set your timer, be pressing, really be pressing. And if you're not hearing a sizzle or seeing some steam, you're going to want to pull that Teflon sheet up and spritz your uh, fleece to make sure it's nice and moist. Okay, see you in about six minutes. Man, you could really see the steam coming off of this. So I know I've still got plenty of moisture but my timer's about to go off. Might not be a bad idea to get a pair of tongs or, or something to protect your fingers because this stuff really is hot, so just be careful, okay? So we're going to pull this Teflon sheet back, and we will take our sandwich apart. You could just have your, have your little uh, bucket sitting there with your water so you can just throw your fleece right in that water and kind of let it soak and get some of the, uh, get some of the color out for next time. As you can see, I still haven't washed these. So I'm just going to throw them in there and then get down to the leaves and see what we got. See a lot, I see a lot of color on the fleece, and it looks like I did get some color on the silk noil. Good. Yeah, it really, really took the orange off. I really like that a lot. Let's see what we got for the leaves here. Interestingly enough, I did not get a lot of detail, a little bit off the pecan there, but those sycamores, I didn't get anything, and those were, those were fresh like the pecan. I knew that the ginkgos weren't going to turn, but uh, even the Boston fern, isn't it funny how it picks up, though, when we bundle those for, you know, two or three hours, they just fall apart, don't they? So that's kind of a nice thing, able to pick it up all at one time. I'm going to do a second one here, and I'm not going to spend a lot of time showing you by now. I think you know how to make your sandwich. You know how to use the fleece with the water, whether it's fleece or, or terry cloth towel, or I think Jill said she was using old diapers. Not old diapers, hopefully clean diapers, but just something that's really going to hold in your moisture. I don't know if felt's the right thing to use. Felt's not very absorbent. So again, I've got my carrier blanket going down on top. Then I'm going to have my layers of fleece, my Teflon, press and we'll see what I end up with. Here's a side-by-side -side comparison. These are the two uh, silk noil pieces that I did on C's heat press. I have ironed these down to with a fusible interfacing to cotton so the back side has been stabilized with cotton. Look how dirty that is. That came right off my Teflon sheet so make sure you wash those Teflon sheets and get them nice and clean. 
but I think I got really good definition using C's heat press as opposed to here are the ones that I just did using the flat iron and I am not seeing any definition in the leaves at all. I see beautiful resist and there's still a lot that you can do with this from an artistic standpoint, but from an eco printing standpoint, I'm a little disappointed. And had, had I not used carrier blankets, I would have been in big trouble. Here was a fun project I did. I took some watercolor paper and some silk noil, and I just ripped up strips of tissue paper, put it down on top, and got it wet, 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 and then just kept wetting it and rolling it around and enhancing those bleeds. And I think it's kind of a fun project. All right, I've gone ahead and let these dry, and I'm going to use my jelly plate to try and paint some on the silk noil, just kind of paint the leaves a color, make it look like fall. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get some freezer paper, and I'm going to make a mask. I will iron the mask down to the areas that I don't want to get paint, and then the exposed areas will be the ones that will be the part that actually uh, it gets the color. So I'm going to show you how I'm about to do that now. I've taped my silk noil down to the light table, and I've just taken some freezer paper, put it over the top. The waxy or shiny side is down, and I'm drawing on the paper side of the freezer paper. And I'm just tracing around the area. It's so light that it's kind of hard to see. That's why I keep turning the light on and off. I'm just tracing around the area where I'm going to cut out and make my mask. As I'm making my mask, I like to draw right on my pattern what part's going to get ironed down and what part's not going to be ironed down. Sometimes as you start to cut this apart, it gets confusing. So I just write myself little notes, where my mask is, where wh what's going to be clean, what's going to be colored, that type of thing. So uh, just so to cut down on the confusion. Here's my mask. My roadmap is complete. I'm guaranteed for success. I'm going to go cut this out with an X-Acto knife or a pair of scissors, and then I will iron it directly onto my fabric. I have my Teflon sheet down on top of my ironing board cover. I have my iron preheating to a cotton setting. I'm now going to take my mask. Waxy side is going to go down against the fabric. I'm just going to line everything out. Then I'm going to take my second Teflon sheet, put it over the top, and press it on. Be careful when you lay that Teflon sheet down. You want to make sure nothing shifts, so just take your time. And also make sure your Teflon sheet is clean. I've got some little boogers on there from uh, fusible interfacing, and the whole point of using a Teflon sheet is to keep your iron clean. So just kind of give it the scratch test and make sure it's nice and clean. Once you get it pressed down, just kind of give it a visual, make sure everything's stuck well. You're going to, you know, be applying paint and you don't want the thing coming loose on you as you're taking it off the jelly plate. So just make sure you got a good, a nice fuse with your freezer paper. Before you get started, be thinking about your color scheme. Do you want to be analogous? Do you want to be complementary? Do you want to go with the triad? I like to pull out my color wheel. I have a lot of purple and violet in this piece. So I'm going to use orange and I'm going to use green, which is kind of the triad on the color wheel. And I'm, I think I'm going to be really happy with that combination. So I'm just going to get ready with my brayer and ink up my jelly plate. One of the nice things about the jelly plate is you put your paint directly on top and just spread it around with a brayer. Um, there's very little cleanup. You kind of make a mess and it's kind of fun and you don't really have to worry about cleaning up. So I'm just going to brayer my two colors right down on top of my jelly plate. I can, I can overlap if I want and, and get some variations of my color. You can take a leaf or you can take something and push it down into the jelly plate and texture. That's kind of fun. There's just all kinds of things you can do. 
here you can see I used one of my big old pottery molds and I actually I think I took a little bit too much color away so I'm really new at the jelly plate I'm crawling kicking and screaming my way through this so I'm it's kind of a kind of an experiment but I'm having fun with it I have my paint smoothed out and I'm going to take my silk noil and I'm going to use a brayer. You can also use your hand or you can use a baron. You're just burnishing so that you can transfer the paints from the jelly plate onto your substrate. Mine again is silk noil that I have on freezer paper to help uh, to stabilize it, to make it a little more like paper so it's easier to handle. So let's pull it off and let's see how it looks. Oh, that's nice, I like that. But I think I'm gonna go for a little more color. I'm going to add a little bit of yellow and a little bit of khaki, so I'm totally going to mess up my color wheel design. And I'm just pressing a leaf into there to try to get some texture before I put my silk noil down. And I, I didn't really see that much texture. I saw it a lot on paper. I did not see it that much on fabric. But I think it might have been uh, subtle enough to at least give me a little, a little bit of depth. I, I apologize. I don't think I show you on the end here how it came out. I think I just pulled it off and went, hmm. Once you've applied all the paint that you're going to use, you just want to rip off that freezer paper. I really used a lot of paint, so the freezer paper is being a little reluctant to come off, but I think it came off pretty cleanly. I think it was a good, it was a good practice. In hindsight, since I want to silk screen on this, I could have left the freezer paper mask on there and silk screened and I just kind of got in a hurry and didn't do that. So sorry about that. Here's one of my prints that I had done on paper and I'm just about to press down another, another piece of freezer paper for a mask. And the thing I wanted to share on this technique is there were some really pretty areas in there where there's blue I did not feel like cutting out all those little bitty shapes of freezer paper, so I decided to try and use rubber cement. And I'm really happy with how it came out. The rubber cement acted as a really nice mask. I understand that Doc Martin also has a liquid mask that you can buy. I don't have it, so I don't know if it's a rubber su substance like the rubber cement. But man, I'm a big fan of rubber cement. I have to thank Doss for that because she kind of reintroduced me uh, to rubber cement. And boy, I love this stuff. So if you have any rubber cement sitting around, it makes a great mask. All right, I have inked up my jelly plate. I do have this on speed because I'm really not very good at this jelly plate thing. I'm working on it. I'm having fun with it, but I don't feel like I'm ready to show a, a demonstration on how to use it because I stink at this. But I'm having fun, and with my mask down, I can just keep adding colors and having a good time. This freezer paper was a little more difficult to get off, I think, I guess because maybe I used more paint, I'm not really sure. But, uh, ooh, wow, my tape's ripping my paper. I didn't, didn't see that one coming. So it is pulling off, but it's not a bad idea to keep the positive of the negative, and I'll show you what I'm talking about in a second here. So just go ahead, pull off the freezer paper, use your finger to rub over the surface to see if you can feel for any raised areas where there might be some hidden paper that you didn't get pulled off. Use a pencil, you could use your pottery needle tool, you could use a toothpick, whatever. Make sure you get all the paper up. Then when you're sure you have all the paper up, you want to go to those areas where you use the rubber cement and you want to just keep rubbing your finger over, 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 over to get all that rubber cement. And then see how cool that is? It's allowing that blue to just come through and just made it made such an easy way to to do a mask. This is the part I was talking about keeping the positive to the negative so that when you put it down you, you it kind of gives you a visual of where you actually had that mask so you can make sure that you get it all removed from your substrate. Let me know if you have any questions on that. This might be the ugliest thing I've ever seen. Because I am stubborn and this is so ugly, I'm going to take some gel, that gloss, golden gloss medium, 
it's a real heavy medium and I'm actually painting it on with a paintbrush. I'm going to do a butterfly and a dragonfly and maybe a flower and then I'm going to iron on that gold leaf and just kind of give this some bling. I also am going to try a sponge pouncer with that golden gel medium because I kind of like the grunge look that I get with the misty fuse. So I'm just going to kind of pounce through the stencil so I don't get a really heavy salad. I get kind of a grungy look. We'll see how that comes out. We're going to have to let this dry overnight and we'll come back tomorrow and do the ironing. Okay, so guess what? It's tomorrow, which was really yesterday. Uh, went ahead and pressed it down. Ooh, look at all that beautiful copper and gold leaf. I'm going to take it outside and I'm going to use my squeegee and get all the stuff off. Oh my, that, that really helped, didn't it? <laughs> well, well, it came out and I kind of like my grungy little flower down there. So don't worry about this. I'm, I'm going to work on it. It, it is pretty ugly, but, uh, I don't know. I got big plans for this piece. Don't worry. Stay tuned. I decided on this piece that I wanted a ginkgo. My ginkgos didn't print, so I'm just going to fake it and put a ginkgo in. So this is freezer paper. Again, I am making a mask, or you could call this a stencil. I'm going to iron this down to my fabric, and then I'm going to use the golden medium to paint inside there. Then I'm going to take a plastic fork and remove some of the gold medium then the next day I will come back and I will use the metallic the gold leaf or the copper leaf and I will make myself a beautiful ginkgo so stay tuned. I have done the job here and I just wanted you to see the pretty pattern that the fork made. I kind of wish I would have gone in the direction I needed to. Um, I'm going to go ahead and pull off the fuser the fusing freezer paper so you can see how easy it is to pull off and tomorrow I'll add the gold leaf. Here's some enhancing that I've done to some of the ironed prints. I've gone ahead and done some silk screening on here and I took this home last night and I pinned and inked. Really happy with how that came out. I don't know if you can see the detail but I really like this. I'm not done with it. Can you see the outlines? I kind of like that. I'm not done with it yet. I don't know what I'm going to do with it. Not sure what it's going to be when it grows up, but I'm kind of having fun with this guy. I kind of like it. I really like the subtleness of the colors. I love the turquoise with the orange. Here's another piece I'm somewhat happy with. This is on Silk Noil. Uh, there's my little ginkgo in copper, and I also silk screened some lettering on here. I'm very happy with how that came out. Here is the Silk Noil that I used on the jelly plate. I have come up with a beautiful William Blake poem about trees. I was hoping to silk screen that today and show it to you. And it's pouring rain. I can't get a silk screen burn to save my life. I've already ruined two screens. So you're just going to have to trust me on this. Stay tuned and I promise I will, I will show you uh, my progress as I make it. Oh, and remember that tissue paper piece that I did? <laughs> check that out. I took a stencil using the golden gel medium. Also, yeah, stabilized that to cotton so it's really got a nice uh, bit of weight to it and I really, really don't know what I'm going to do with it, but I really like, yeah, I don't know why I keep pulling that ugly thing out. Uh, boy, uh, I'm taking suggestions if anybody knows what I should do with this thing. Okay, guys, thanks for joining me today and next week I think we're going to be doing moths. Later, guys.